all right guys welcome back to my channel i know it's been a while but um today's video is going to be a more beginner style video again because i've had a lot of you guys like tell me that i should do more beginner videos and on my beginner videos i get a lot of comments like wow this was really helpful or wow you should do a video like this for beginners and that type of thing and a lot of you guys request them a lot so today's video is kind of for like beginners if you're looking for a facility to board at before you get your horse or if you have a horse but you don't know where you want to put it yet and that type of thing so picking out a facility I think is important and um, can play a big role in like in your performance with your horse and um, your progress with your horse and all that type of stuff so I think picking out a facility that you really really like and are really gonna enjoy is an important part of like having your horse especially if you're going to be practicing for shows training all that kind of stuff so my first tip is to take lessons or ride at like several different barns in your area so at least I know in my area we have like at least five or six barns like within a half hour from here so if you're looking for a facility facility that you're really gonna like try and go to all those different barns and see which one is the best layout see which one you really like um, what they provide all that other type of stuff and and just get a feel for what um, what is good and what isn't very good so just try and like get a good idea of all the different types of barns because there are definitely different types of barns. Second is to know your atmosphere. So when I say go to different barns, when you go to different barns, there's different types of atmospheres at each barn. So you really want to find what atmosphere you like best because if you if you go to like a barn that's big into showing and big into jumping, say we go to a big hunter jumper barn, the atmosphere there is going to be a lot different than a barn that is also a rescue facility or a barn that is also a retirement ranch. A barn that focuses big on western um, showing a big western pleasure is going to be a lot different than like a family owned farm. See what types of barns you like better um, size wise. Do you like small barns that are like maybe 10 horses there, very like family owned um, personal barns or do you prefer a big barn that has like a hundred horses there and tons of borders and a huge arena and that type of thing a very public style barn so you just want to go out and see what you like best because at a barn that that would be big into showing and be a big show barn is going to act and um, care for their horses differently than a barn that is also a retirement ranch Barns that are big show barns are probably going to treat their horses differently in ways like stalling them, graining them. You know, they're going to provide different things and they're probably going to be a lot more expensive. So you need to find your price range. So even if you really like certain barns, your price range, make sure it fits into your range. Because board can be really expensive at big show facilities because most of those facilities um, do full-time stall boarding which is always more expensive because they are hiring people to clean the barn um, clean each stall they're hiring people to feed and water the horses to grain the horses and do chores they're buying hay because the horses aren't outside eating grass so they have to buy hay um, they're probably paying for more water so that's probably gonna be more expensive and some barns big show barns really only have stall board especially if you live in like a more city type of area they're only gonna have stall board which isn't as good for the horse I think we all know that um, but if you're going to a barn that is um, a really relaxed very personally owned um, not a lot of big show people there they're probably gonna have more um, pasture and herd type environments they're probably going to be a really more laid back take it easy so they might be a little less expensive and those places are oftentimes more flexible with your horse big show barns usually have a clear-cut schedule they have um, a checklist of what they do every day usually if you go to a, a big show barn they have 
um, stall board with provided hay and provided grain. So your horse is getting grained. And sometimes people don't want their horse to get grain or they want to provide the certain grain that their horse needs. So it might be a little less flexible than a smaller family owned type of facility. And you want to really look at the additional add-ons of the facility because usually that's all included in the board. You really want to look at the pasture quality. If you're going to be pasturing your horse, look at the quality of the pasture because that's really important. I, there's, a, there's a really popular barn um, about a half hour from here that a lot of people board at. I have several friends that board there. I know a lot of people really like that barn. Um, there's a lot of really friendly people at that barn. It's kind of a mix of showing people and non-showing people. So um, a lot of people really like that barn. But what I don't like about the barn is that they have a pasture that's probably five or six acres. But there's so many horses in that pasture that the pasture is really kind of crappy. I mean, it's really short stubby grass, a lot of dirt. I mean, the grass doesn't grow that well. It's really just pounded down and not very efficient. I mean, it's just not, it's not a good quality of pasture. It's very run down and stomped over. Um, but I know some other facilities that do have nice lush pasture. They don't overrun the pasture with horses. Um, and that's what I would look for. Look at the quality see if you know what's in the pasture if it's just like a whole bunch of weeds and timber um there's not really a lot of like prairie or meadow where your horse is actually going to graze that type of thing definitely consider if the owner is on site or not because if, if especially if you have an expensive like show horse or whatever or if just in general if you have a horse um on-site owners are always better than um, people who live off the, off of the property. So if the owner doesn't live on the farm, that definitely opens up risks to people stealing horses, people, workers doing things that they might not be supposed to be doing, um, other people bothering your horse, that type of thing. So I always prefer on-site owners just, just because they're safer. That barn that I was talking about with the, the really rundown pasture, she actually, the owner there doesn't live on site. She actually lives pretty far away from her barn that she owns. And um, I actually know people who took their horse there for training for 30 days. And because she doesn't live on site and they don't lock the gates at night, um, they, instead of paying at the end of the month, they came and got their horse in the middle of the night and left. So they never had to pay. And it was her mistake for not making them sign a contract, obviously. But that can happen. And especially if, you know, if you have a horse that you want to lease out to somebody, you know, that can be scary too because you're giving somebody full access to your horse all the time when you're not around. So um, I prefer an owner on site, but it doesn't make it a bad barn if the owner's not on site, you know, if they have safety regulations and stuff. But um, just like find what you want and what you're comfortable and safe with. Um, another good one is how many workers is there? I prefer somewhere that has minimal workers, but look at how the workers work together and how they communicate with the owner and the boss because I know from working at barns where there's other workers, you know, sometimes it's hard to communicate through all of you and all the workers kind of do things their own way and kind of have their own system of doing things, which in turn can be inconsistent for the horse. It can be hard to manage all these people doing things their own way. And, you know, if you have your horse that has special needs or has special care instructions, sometimes it can be hard um, with all the different workers. But if they if they all communicate and they all work together and the owner really manages them well, then it might not be so bad. But just like kind of keep an eye on that and find out what you want. If you want more personal people who really know each horse, a big barn might be harder to achieve that with. How crowded is it? You know, like I was talking about earlier, sometimes pastures can get crowded. Sometimes the arena can be crowded. If there's only one arena, 
and there's a hundred boarders, you know, a Saturday might be like the worst time to go to the barn because the arena might be so crowded. So find what you like best, find a barn that has a good amount of space, um, might have one or two arenas, and um, what's going to be most effective for you and your horse. And lastly, find somewhere that you want to be long term because I don't like seeing horses that get sold around a lot, that get sold from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. But the same goes for how many homes your horse has been in with you as well. So find somewhere that you want to be and you can see yourself being for a long period of time because even though your horse has the same owner, moving them from this barn to this barn to this barn to this barn gets tiring on your horse, and that can be hard on your horse. Your horse has to figure out um, their surroundings, get comfortable in their surroundings, meet this herd, get pulled out of this herd, and get worked into the pecking order and everything over and over and over. That's going to be really tiring and hard on your horse. So it's best to find somewhere that you can see yourself being comfortable for long term. So you need to look at your goals. What are you going to be doing with your horse? Is this place really going to give great care for your horse? Does this place have all of the resources that you need? So definitely look at all of that so that you're not causing you and your horse to constantly be moving all the time. So those are my tips for you guys looking for facilities, any beginners that um, want to get a horse and whatnot. So Keep those things in mind and let me know what else you want to see down in the comments below. Make sure to check out the description and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!